what we're doing these ponds, you see which are empty now, they're not particularly good for wildlife because it's a drain. So to solve it, we're using this former technology called bentonite clay. It's got an industrial use, it's used to line slurry lagoons. So where you got some really nasty chemicals that you don't want leaking into the water system, you put bentonite clay down, usually they use machines when they're doing it. We can only achieve it here with a lot of volunteers. You take the foot off, the angle is critical because technology won't work if it's more than 30 degrees. So always you've got to think 30 degrees. If it, if it gets more than 30 degrees, the bentonite clay slurries off and won't work. Then we put uh, an even layer of clay on about an inch in depth, right? Then when you've got it all spread out, you put a weight on of, of, of material. Usually a foot of material will do it. But what happens? It's like a sandwich is falling. It means that the bentonite clay can't expand upwards like it would want to. It can only expand outwards. The analogy is it's cream cheese butter. Put a big lump of cream cheese in, slam the butter down, and it's send it all spurting out to the side. So that's what's going to happen. So every nook and cranny will be filled with the uh, bentonite clay. And that's held permanently in position. And that's what's giving it its waterproofing property. So much so that this was an attempt was made to vandalise. Unlike a conventional liner, the bentonite clay will raise seal because the pressure makes it reseal. We're like having a bike player, but it'll never go down. The expensive version of the stuff is like a, a, a roll of it, which you just roll out. We are just using the granulated clay, which is the raw product, which is much cheaper. But that, that will have to be spread evenly in, in a, an inch layer. If all the recording is found, the thing will be permanently waterproof. It'll never drain again. And there is wildlife here, between amphibians and all sorts. So, um, it will become better and better for uh, wildlife. The next reserve is now being used for bringing food groups in. So this is like another big outdoor classroom. And a part of it is going in about ponds. But you do need to have ponds with critters in it or else it's a bit useless, isn't it? Only another 3,000 tons of stuff and then we're finished. It's good, isn't it?
Yeah, the story so far, this is week two. The first week we, we dug out the hole basically, got the shape of the thing, got the sides right. Uh, it was too wet, if you remember, last week, to put the bentonite clay in. This is bentonite clay, uh, which is the material we're using to water through the pond. Tom is now applying bentonite clay just to reinforce this layer. This stuff, when it gets wet, expands 30 times in all directions. Now you want that to happen but in a controlled situation where you have a foot of soil on top so when it does wet up it only expands laterally and fills all the nooks and crannies in that's what gives it its waterproofing so what we didn't want is residual moisture to cause the clay to swell you see that's not happening so that's perfect we don't want to disrupt this clay layer now so they're going to walk across and just apply the soil carefully with buckets yeah. rather than throwing it in then when it's completely filled up and when it rains uh, the expansion of the bentonite will kick in and that is what forms this impermeable layer across the the, the, the bottom of the pond and the sides and that is is uh, waterproof it works on this side of the pond and it's also incredibly resistant to vandalism because once it's down and the pond's full it'll self-seal it'll basically fill in by itself you know whatever you pierce the beauty of this material it doesn't biodegrade or do anything like that it's like it will last indefinitely whereas even the best liners i mean the multi-layered stuff they will eventually degrade uh, as all plastics man-made products do well this technology uh, it does have the, the beauty of that once you've done it it should be right whole water indefinitely if you've got it right because this is remember this technology is what they use on like slurry lagoons where you've got really nasty chemicals that you want to contain i think costing wise too it's um for two ponds we're going to actually use up about 600 pounds of bentonite clay you can get it in a roll but that's even more expensive this is like the cheap version of it of what is not a cheap process even a conventional liner would cost you quite a substantial figure for this size ponds. But the conventional liner, like the um, butyl rubber or PVC, would still cost you a hefty chunk of money, cost hundreds like, you know, so... Um, there's pros and cons with all methods, but um, if we get this right, it should be um, permanent, we hope. So we're going to start on the next stage now, you can see the buckets it's now a question of starting to apply the final layers of soil you'll see none of the clay when it's finished what happens and i have seen this technology used on a number of occasions in fact most of the times i've seen it used it fails the biggest single cause of failure is overdoing the slope right if you overdo the slope you get the angle wrong not 30 degrees you get it 45 yeah which you do if you use it on a pond that's too small a 45 degree slope the soil slips off the top and the bentonite clay expands all over and just becomes a blob that doesn't have the properties of filling in all the gaps it's just an amorphous blob that does no water you can always tell when i've seen it when it's failed you just see massive lumps of bentonite clay stuck up um well we've got this right i believe but only time will tell but i put money on this one working so yeah good
quite the lightest, but yeah, that be, yeah. Evelyn or Jane, two foot in. Yeah, the bigger one's probably a smooth newt, and the little ones are palmate newt, but they're a bit difficult to tell because they're a bit mucky, and also not really got the breeding characteristics on.